Carolyn Doobie here. Oh, what's the play for today? Well, today I'm talking about taking paint pouring beyond the canvas. Sure, you've seen people do pours. You've seen interesting patterns, those details that show up. But besides putting them on your wall, is there anything else you can do with them? Absolutely. There's actually lots and lots you can do with them. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to turn paint pouring into a quick pin. Here are two canvases that are completely dry that I've done with paint pouring. I've had the fun of flipping the cup over, the color running around, seeing what magical things will appear on the canvas. But what can I do with this besides just hang it on a wall? Because there are actually lots of things that you can do with these. What I need to do first is get it cut out of the frame. And to do this, I'm just going to take a craft knife and cut around all of the sides. You probably know this, but I'm just going to say it. A fresh blade, a sharp blade is much easier to work with than a dull one. So if you're having any trouble doing this, I really recommend you change out your blade for a fresh one. So you might be wondering, if I knew I was going to cut this out when I did it, why did I do it on the canvas? Why did I do it on a stretch canvas and not just on a plain piece of fabric? Well, first I used a very inexpensive canvas. And inexpensive is being kind to it. It's cheap. This was about a dollar, sometimes a little bit less if I can catch them on sale, because I buy them in groups of 10. The other thing is when doing paint pouring, to have the canvas stretched around that frame makes it easy to move around, easy to pour on, easy to keep level, all those kinds of things, so that you can get a really great pour on it. Another perk of cutting them out of the frame is that they don't take up much space to store them. So if space is an issue for you, cutting them out of the frame makes it very practical to have lots of pores around that you can use to create things with. And if you're wondering if making these canvases took a lot of space, it didn't. That's one of the myths that I keep hearing people say is they think paint pouring has to take up a lot of space. And sure, if you're gonna do a giant, giant canvas, it does. But if you're working on eight by tens, you can do it in a very small space. The backside right now is just plain canvas, and I wanna give it a little bit of color as well as a little more strength and stability. So to do that, I'm gonna bring in some gel prints. It could be patterned paper, it could be cardstock, it can be anything that you want it to be, but it's just something to make the backside not so plain. I'm adding some gel medium here, and as I'm adding it, I'm being more generous than I would be if I was putting this on paper. And the reason for that is the canvas, the fabric, is just more absorbent than paper is with it. So it's gonna soak in a little bit more. And I wanna make sure that I've got enough on there, enough glue, so that when I put the paper on it, it is fully adhered to the canvas, because this is gonna become the back of it. It's important that the paper really gets pushed down onto the canvas so it adheres well. I can spend a bunch of time doing it with my hand, or I can just use something like a brayer and roll it down to make sure that I've got good contact everywhere. I'm gonna repeat this process for all of the canvases that I have here that I wanna use for this project. So here I am working on the second one, and notice what's happening with the first one. That poured canvas over on the left, see how it's starting to curl up some? Well, that's because the cardstock was getting wet from the gel medium. Paper tends to do that when it gets wet. So what can we do about paper curling up? Because we all want it to dry flat, right? So when I first do it, it's nice and flat, but in just a couple of moments, this one's gonna start to curl up too. So the trick is to keep it flat while it's drying. So I'm gonna stack these one on top of the other, and then I'm gonna take whatever I have within arm's reach and put it on top to just hold it flat. And then give it half an hour or however long it takes to dry, and then these will be nice and flat when you lift everything off. Now that they're dry, I can easily trim off the paper around the edges. So how do you do paint pouring? How do you get pours like this with all of the color and the pattern and the swirls happening? How do you know exactly how to mix up your paint and pouring medium so that you get the results that you want? How do you know which pouring medium to use? Well, all of those things I break down step by step, cover in detail for you in the online workshop, Paint Pouring Fundamentals. I've got a couple of bonuses for you in that workshop too when you get signed up. One of them is paint pouring in small spaces and the other one is beyond the canvas. That's a five video series about what you can do with paint pourings beyond just putting them on a canvas on the wall. Now those are just two of the bonuses. There are two more waiting for you. So check out paint pouring fundamentals and get the secrets behind paint pouring. Now that everything's trimmed up, it's time to cut out the shapes that we want to turn into pins. I've cut out a basic heart shape here out of cardstock, and I'm getting an idea of what it'll look like on that side, kind of where I want to place it for the look. 
You might be wondering, well, then why don't you trace it on the side with the paint pouring where all the color and pattern is where you can see exactly where that heart will be? Well, there are two reasons for that. One is it's a glossy surface, so it's harder for a pencil to write on it. And two, I know that when I cut it out, I never cut things out very perfectly. Boy, that's terrible English there, but you, you know what I'm getting at. Um, and so what happens is, is some of the pen marks or the lines are left on the front, and I don't want that. So that's why I'm gonna do this on the back. It's also why it's really handy to have paper on the back because that's very easy to trace with a pencil. And you bet I'm gonna try and get as many under this piece of paper as I can. I'm gonna squeeze them everywhere that's possible. Then just take your scissors and cut them out. Now to those of you that are wondering if I am actually the bionic woman, I am not. I don't really cut paper this fast. As much as I would love to have those skills, I am not bionic. And yet you probably know that this is a camera just going faster as I'm cutting out the rest of the hearts. Once these are cut out, then we just need the very last step and that's putting on the pin back. Now the pin backs that I have happen to be self-adhesive and you pull off the paper and you're supposed to be able to just stick them down. But between you and me, that never holds well enough to make me happy. So I'm gonna put some glue on there. I'm gonna use Beacon's three-in-one glue for two reasons. One, it grabs really well quickly. And two, it doesn't make the paper warp much. So if I had done this much, say gel medium, I'd run the risk of a little more paper warping there and I don't want that. So that's why I'm using the three-in-one here on these. Now that the glue's dry, these pins are ready to give and ready to wear. Well, thanks so much for joining me for today's play. If you've been enjoying this video, I'd so appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, hit that subscribe button so you'll know as soon as I have a new video out. If you'd like to know more about paint pouring, you wanna know the secrets behind it and how to do it step by step, check out my online workshop, Paint Pouring Fundamentals, and there are four bonuses for you when you get signed up now. Thanks so much for letting me be a part of your colorful journey.